The United States has already dropped some, some food and water to tens of thousands of Iraqis trapped at the top of a mountain who had to flee the militants. So can the United States stop ISIS before the militants completely overrun Iraq? And most importantly, from this perspective, what should the U.S. role be here? Joining us to discuss, CNN Crossfire host Newt Gingrich. So, Newt, I really am interested in getting your take on not only the president's statement, but also the action the president de decided to take last night. Well, um, let's start with his statement, which is, frankly, a little confusing. Why? <clears throat> if he, well, if he doesn't want to risk American lives, he can pull them out of Herbal. I mean, there's no obligation to sit in Herbal. Uh, so, so he's trying to find a hometown, gosh, I have to do this, all of us patriots have to rally together, uh, we're not going to risk American lives. Uh, the tragedy of where we are, and this is not about President Obama, this is about President Bush, it's about President Clinton, it's about where the country's been now about radical Islamism, probably, for, probably since 1979 when the Iranians seized the American uh, embassy. Nobody wants to tell the truth. The truth is, this is a radical Islamist group. They say openly, if you don't convert, we'll kill you. It turns out they actually mean it. There's no, no complexity. They're exactly like Hamas. Hamas says openly, we're going to kill every Jew. That's a direct quote from two weeks ago. It, we will kill every Jew. Uh, the difference is that ISIS is gaining power, and they're doing exactly what they said they would do. Uh, and I think this, if you go from Boko Haram, in Nigeria all the way across the region what you see is a radical Islamist force nobody in the American State Department nobody in the White House not just Obama but for three or four administrations we have not had the courage to confront how bad this is and it's getting worse by the way yesterday there were there were ISIS forces in Lebanon occupying a town in the middle of a fight with the Lebanese army in northern Lebanon they're in Syria they are recruiting people in Europe and the United States uh, they see themselves as a worldwide fight uh, and so the president says we're gonna stop them from getting to herbal well what does that accomplish well, I mean, what, we, you, either, what is either your we prescription that's uh, what do you want to see do you want to see combat troops on the ground what are you saying no. I, I think that we should be arming and training the Kurds who are very reliable we should be arming uh, the traditional tribes with whom we had very good relations uh, back when we were in Iraq we should be providing air power in a massive way we should be uh, hunting down ISIS anywhere it exists, whether it's in northern Syria, it's in Lebanon, or it's in Iraq. But our goal shouldn't be to stop ISIS, or our goal should be to destroy ISIS. This is a radical, anti-human organization. Do you not that think, gonna... Newt, that you can accomplish that with, if, if you went really big on airstrikes, that you can accomplish that, taking them out? I think, if, I think if you train and equip Kurds and you train and equip traditional Sunni tribes and you, and you ally yourself with everybody who wants to defeat ISIS, you will, in fact, defeat ISIS. But the goal should be clear, mm -hmm. just as it should be in Gaza. The goal in Gaza should be the defeat of Hamas, because Hamas means what it says. It wants to kill every Jew. ISIS means what it says. Well, you can't coexist with a neighbor whose stated public goal is to wipe your family out. Well, we're talking about how to accomplish, right. how, how, what to do to accomplish that goal on the ground. But then you also have a problem here at home. You've got you, lawmakers last night, by and large, came out supporting the president's move. Some saying it is not enough, as I'm hearing from you. But you also have an American public. We've talked about this sure. before, Newt. They are war-weary. They have no appetite to be going back in, no. to be throwing everything at it, to take on, uh, to start, I mean, I'm saying, they're not saying they're going to start nation-building again, but to, they don't want to go back in. What do you I say to the American I, public? I don't blame them. We've just had 12 years of war that accomplished almost nothing. You're seeing that in Iraq right now. You're seeing it with Hamas right now. Until we have a national strategy and we have an open, honest conversation, the president couldn't even honestly describe ISIS last night because it goes against his ideology. So he what can't do you even mean? Explain. How was he, he misdescribing it last night? ISIS is a radical Islamist organization dedicated to wiping out everybody who's not prepared to convert to Islam. Uh, it has a very clear religious background, just as Hamas does, just as Boko Haram does. There is a war against Christians across the region. Uh, and the fact is that we have got to be prepared to be honest about this. We should be the ally of every rational, moderate Muslim. But we should understand, with people like ISIS, this is going to end up sooner or later being war to the death. And what the American people deserve is a coherent strategy that gets us to a decisive victory and the minimum use of American troops and the maximum use of other kinds of American assets. One thing that, is, of course, comes up is the question of, is this mission creep or looking at it from the other side, is this not enough? 
I want in in answering those questions and kind of exploring that you also when you commit to something like this you need to be prepared to answer the question then what has the president answered yes. that no and, and look there, there's a passion for some reason particularly on the left with this idea of targeted strikes I remember doing this at one point in the Balkans when I was speaker mm -hmm. and so I don't understand what the term targeted strikes means if ISIS is as, as evil as I'm describing, and I think it is, as the Pope has described in calling for humanitarian intervention, as everybody seems to describe in, in looking at what it's doing, then we should be trying to defeat it everywhere, not saying, as the president said last night, boy, if you send a truck towards Erbil, we might kill it. Well, what about the truck that's sitting, you know, two miles away with its engine idling, waiting for us to, to not pay attention? I think either this is serious and we should figure out how to win, or this is not serious and we should figure out how to get out. And as I pointed out, he could pull the troops out of Erbil, and he just eliminated one of his two excuses. There's, there's no reason we have to be there unless it's part of a strategic purpose. How does the political turmoil that's also happening on the ground in Iraq, how does that play into this? Because there is a possibility we're hearing that, you know, we could, they could get a new prime minister in the, in the coming days. Does that change anything in your opinion on how the U.S. approaches this? Yeah, I, look, I think Maliki has been a disaster just as Karzai has been a disaster in Afghanistan. And I think that's the reality sometimes of going into countries like this, that you end up with a leader who is either very corrupt very dishonest, uh, trying to do make sure his faction wins at the cost of everybody else. We don't have a very good doctrine, frankly, at the State Department for figuring out how you cope with people like that. Maliki's been a major problem for the last three or four years. Yeah. Uh, hopefully he'll be gone, but that won't solve the problem. And you now have in ISIS a, a, a cancer that is spreading in the region and a cancer that is recruiting in Europe and the United States. But do you agree with the president's statement, though? And he said this to me when we sat down early on in this, in this latest crisis, when we talked about this, and he said it again last night, there is no American military solution to the larger crisis in Iraq. Do you agree with him on that? No, and the reason I don't agree with him is that, that his idea that, that there's a political solution is a fantasy. That's my point. How are you going to have a political solution with Hamas, who wants to kill every Jew? How are you going to have a political solution with ISIS, which wants to kill everybody who refuses to become Muslim? Uh, ultimately, these are forces just like Nazi Germany. But he's saying it's up to Iraq. To, they, they need to be the ones that well, deal with this, ultimately. Look, I, ISIS is now in Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. Uh, it is recruiting in Europe and the United States. That's, that's my whole point. You've got to see yeah. this as a worldwide fight, not a locality-by-locality locality neighborhood brawl. Dude, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming Good on. Good to see you. Talk Thank to you soon. You. All right.